Welcome to another edition of GTN Coaches Corner, where we answer all of your questions. You can leave your questions below this video or any of our videos. Use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner, and we'll be answering your question next week. Let's get straight into our questions. This week, all of our questions are swimming related. So our first one is from DSM1891. Hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. How much time is saved with tumble turning versus the old head out of the water spin around? I can never seem to get my head around tumble turns and frankly, it's a skill that's unpleasant to train. How much will my swim training benefit from learning to tumble turn? Okay, everyone can learn to tumble turn. Yes, it can be a little bit unpleasant at first. You get water up your nose, you get your balance all, all off and you feel like you're all over the place. Uh, but it can be learned. It's not actually that difficult to learn. We actually have a video on how to tumble turn if you want to watch that and learn. Uh, the, there are a lot of benefits to tumble turning. The main one is that it makes your swimming more constant. It means that you don't get this break every 25 or 50 meters. And it may not feel like much of a break when you just touch the wall, take a breath and push off again but it's actually really changing your stroke. It's almost resetting your stroke again before you do the next length and you don't get that in races and you need to train the way you race which is more consistent swimming which means you should really be tumble turning. When you take a big breath, when you're not tumble turning, you touch the wall, you take a big breath and you push off. It's a real advantage and you don't get that advantage when you tumble turning. Obviously, you get the opposite. You can't breathe through the turn, into the turn and through the turn and that is actually going to benefit your swimming. It's going to make you better at controlling your breathing and a better swimmer overall. Uh, it is also faster once you're good at it. It may not feel like it the first few times you do it and when you're still learning, it may feel like you're all over the place, sometimes you miss the wall, etc. But once you get good at it, it is significantly faster than uh, doing your touch turns. Um, it is not a vital skill and I'm not gonna say you have to do it, you must learn it, otherwise you're not gonna be any good at swimming. It is not 100% vital. You don't actually need it in a race, of course, because it's an open water swim. Uh, so you don't have to do it and if it's gonna make you hate swimming, just leave it out, carry on touching and turning. But if you are interested in being a better, faster, more fit swimmer, then you should probably learn to tumble turn. Okay, on to our next question. It's from Svetoslav Markov, and he says, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. Thanks for all the wonderful stuff. I am fairly new in the triathlon world with two years of experience. I have a question regarding swim training. I go to swimming classes where we swim at different breath intervals, every third, every fifth, every seventh, every ninth. Generally, I breathe at every third stroke. However, on a race, I tend to do it every second one. My question is, should I work on swimming more, breathing on every second stroke, or continue to do as I do now, breathing every third, thank you in advance. Okay, training and breathing every third stroke, as in alternating each side, left and then right, is a really good way to train. It keeps your stroke balanced, it's very good for your rotation, uh, and it keeps you your, your stroke efficient and balanced, you don't favor one side over the other. However, racing and breathing every second stroke, so breathing all the time to one side, is actually better for racing because you're gonna get more oxygen, you're gonna be able to get closer to that threshold, to that limitation, uh, and so breathing more in races is better. Now, obviously you wanna train the way you race, so you also need to train breathing every second uh, stroke, but if you always train breathing every second stroke, then you're gonna get an imbalance because if you always breathe to the left, your left, your right arm's gonna get stronger than your left, etc. And that's obviously something you need to guard against. Uh, I would say that you should do most of your swimming in training if it's easier stuff, breathe in every third stroke to keep that balance. Uh, when you're doing your harder stuff in training, breathe to either the left or the right, breathe in every second stroke, but try and alternate it every length or every 50 meters uh, so that you are still getting that balance. So breathe a whole length to the left every second stroke and then a whole length to the right every second stroke. That way, you're getting enough oxygen to swim really hard and at your race pace, but you're also keeping the balance overall in your stroke so the one arm doesn't get more developed than the other, so you don't favor rotating to one side over the other side, etc. cetera. Uh, hypoxic training uh, is um, only good for actual hypoxic training. You shouldn't really be worrying about that as far as your breathing rate or your breathing stroke. You only do that for training. Anything above breathing every third stroke is not something you're ever gonna use in a race. So breathing every fifth, every seventh, every ninth is something you're just doing in training. It's not something you need to train to be able to do in a race. 
Okay, I hope that answered that. Next question, Emma G asks, I'm doing some early season races, so I'm gonna have to start open water swimming when the water is colder than I'm used to. Are thermal wetsuits worth considering, or is it better to just focus on warming up properly afterwards? Well, if you're getting really cold in your swim, then yeah, you do need to warm up afterwards, but it's not ideal. It's not very good for your body. It's not very good uh, for your fitness if you're gonna get hypothermic, essentially, after every swim in the open water. It's also not gonna make you wanna do it very often, in fact, and make me want to do it never at all. Uh, thermal wetsuits are a good thing. They do actually work. They make you warmer. But the way they do that is by thicker neoprene and more thermal lining on the inside. And that obviously affects their ability to be flexible, and that might affect your swim stroke. So you only want to use it if you absolutely have to, and you have to be aware that that might affect your stroke a little bit. I would say your best bet is to start with getting some booties for your feet, uh, and a skull cap, a neoprene skull cap for your head uh, to keep your head and your feet warm. And then if you need to, if you're still getting cold, a layer of thermal insulation underneath your normal swimming wetsuit. Uh, you do get specific uh, thin neoprene ones that will keep you significantly warmer without adding too much restriction. And if that doesn't work, uh, then yes, a thermal wetsuit is going to be your solution. Um, I would try the other options first that you're in the wetsuit that you are actually planning to do your races in season in uh, when you're doing your training rather than doing all your training in a thermal wetsuit and then swap into a completely different wetsuit for race day. Okay, uh, Clement Suligoj asks, question about swimming. I wonder how much of a difference in time per 100 there is between a 25 meter and a 50 meter pool. For example, if I do a 1000 meter CSS test and I get two minutes per 100 in a 50 meter pool, roughly what time would I get in a 25 meter pool? Note that I don't do flip turn. Some say 25 meters is faster because you get the extra turns, but since I basically stop and push off the wall to get going again, do I really get an advantage? Okay, I think he kind of answered his own question there. You get the advantage by pushing off the wall. And if you do your touch turn fairly rapidly, you're still gonna get an advantage in that 25 meter pool over the 50 meter pool, even if you're not doing a tumble turn. Um, poor turns will obviously take an advantage, some of the advantage away from a 25 meter pool, but, there are other advantages rather than just the turn. There's also the deep breath that you take if you're not tumble turning. There's the change in muscles. You obviously break that, that core position that you're holding the whole time by doing a tumble turn or by touching the wall. Uh, so a 25 meter pool kind of gives you a break. It also gives you a psychological break every 25 meters versus every 50 meters. So generally, a 25 meter pool is faster for everyone uh, than a 50 meter pool. For the pros, swimming at uh, high speeds, generally you're looking at about three seconds per 100 meters on their time. In a 50 meter pool, they're gonna be three seconds slower than a 25 meter pool. Uh, as you go slower or go uh, less fast, that time is actually gonna increase uh, your, your difference between the 25 meter pool and the 50 meter pool. So the slower swimmers will add even more to their 100 meter time in a 50, in a 50 meter pool than a 25 meter pool. I guess though, this is something that's pretty easily tested. Just go do a time trial on the 25 meter pool and the 50 meter pool, uh, but expect that your time will be slower in that 50 meter pool. It is pretty much for everyone. Uh, Daniel Larson then asks, when I have participated in my local club, tri uh, triathlon club swim practices, I start seeing double for around 15 to 30 minutes after the end of practice, and sometimes I get headaches. Note, I have rubber earplugs in the ear under the whole practice, and I have noticed that it's not as bad when I have long pauses every 300 meters. Would be thankful if you could help me. Well, uh, this could be a number of things uh, and it is definitely not normal, so you definitely need to get to the bottom of it. It could be a blood sugar crash. Uh, if you're swimming without nutrition, without eating anything beforehand, uh, you could actually just be getting low blood sugar, that dizziness that you feel afterwards, uh, you, you know, feeling nauseous, dizzy, double vision. Uh, you could have a serious blood pressure blood sugar crash. It could also be orthostatic hypertension, which is similar to what you get when you get out of bed too quickly in the morning and you get this head rush and you feel dizzy. Uh, you're basically all the blood is in your legs and arms and then you stand up and it just drains from your head and you get dizzy C double. Uh, it could be that, so you need to take it a bit slower getting in and out of the pool. Uh, it could also be an inner ear balance issue and those earplugs of yours are definitely not helping that. So if it is that, maybe try swimming without earplugs for a while and just get that water out of your ears after you swim rather than preventing it going in during. Uh, it could also be something as simple as your goggles are simply just 
too tight. Uh, goggles pushing hard on your eyeballs and on your eye sockets can lead to headaches and to double vision uh, afterwards as your one eye is just literally trying to find its way back to where it's supposed to be. So check that your goggles are not too tight and using goggles, they don't actually put pressure on your eyeball itself, on your eye socket. They rather feel uh, have a, a good seal around them without any pressure. Uh, it's hard to know uh, what exactly is causing this. I hope one of those has helped. Uh, it's not normal though, so I would definitely investigate it and figure out what's causing it. Don't just uh, tough it out. That's not something that you should be getting after a swim. Okay, last question for today, and it's Lucas S. He says, how to breathe underwater doing breathing exercises? Normally I breathe every two strokes, but when I do breathing exercises every five or seven strokes, I find it difficult to do. Should I keep air in the lungs for longer and let it all out to the end, or should I gradually breathe out there? How do you do these breathing exercises correctly? Okay, this is a similar thing to what we had earlier with those hypoxic breathing, every five, every seven, every nine. His question is, how do you do that? Do you just uh, slowly, really, really slowly breathe out for the whole time, or do you hold your breath so that you can get closer to nine strokes before you breathe again? Um, my answer would be, my solution would be to hold your breath until the right amount of time. So for me, I could gently breathe out and finish my breath, so I breathe in the last little bit out before I breathe with five strokes. Uh, so if I was doing a hypoxic breathing every seven, I would hold my breath for two strokes and then gradually breathe out so that I finished the last bit of air out of my lungs just as I took that next breath. It is all about timing because you do want your lungs to be completely empty just before you take that next breath. You don't wanna be holding any air in or have to breathe it out as you're taking that breath. Uh, you also don't want to be still holding air in your lungs when you take that breath because you won't be able to get fresh air in. So it is all about timing. It's figuring out what that timing is. Uh, you probably can't breathe out constantly for all seven strokes or all nine strokes if you breathe in every nine. Uh, that will be almost impossible. You just won't have enough oxygen in your lungs. So best to finish your last breathing out as you get to the end of those seven or nine strokes. And to do that, hold your breath for a little bit in the beginning. Now, the reason for doing these hypoxic things is to increase your lung function, increase your lung capacity, and really strain all those lung muscles uh, to, to really make you breathe more efficiently and stronger. So it is supposed to hurt, it is supposed to be difficult. It is not something that you need to do in training, I mean in racing, it is only for training and it is only to improve your inspiratory muscles uh, and your control, your breathing control and your breathing timing. Uh, so you're gonna have to breathe very efficiently that one breath you have every seven or nine. Uh, and that is what you are practicing. So it is about doing those timings, getting it right, figuring it out for yourself. You might be different to everyone else but it is a good skill to learn and something that you should be including in your training. I hope we've answered some of your questions uh, on swimming today. If you have your own questions on swimming, like I said at the beginning, leave them in the comment section down below and we could be answering them in a future episode of GTN Coaches Corner. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.